with these cards, man. Is it uh, is it fun for you? Is it bittersweet for you? What do you think when, when you get in these positions? It's uh, it's a bit bittersweet for sure. Uh, I know when I'm sitting there, it's, it's good to have a bit of a rest. I mean, I had four fights last year, so it was pretty pretty nonstop. But it's good to have a rest now. But I know sitting on the sidelines, I'm going to be I'm going to be itching to get back in there for sure. Give us the update since we've seen you last. What, what have you been up to? Um, not too much. Just had a had a baby, so I got a four week old at home. Yeah, so I had a daughter. Uh, so that's been keeping me busy. So I think um, obviously to fight, you have to get some sleep. So I think I made the right decision in not fighting. Of, of all cards, Melbourne, but yeah, I think I made the right decision. So we'll just wait for the for the next card to come up and jump on that. Was it hard for you? Was there any part of you that after the last one was like, I gotta get back in there right away? Um, nah, I haven't, knowing that the baby was on the way took the sting off the loss. I mean, you realize when you become a dad, there's bigger things in life sometimes. So, and I had a good year, I had, I had three good wins. Um, the last one was a good scrap uh, against a, a, a pretty, Pretty highly ranked opponent, so um, yeah, so I took the sting off it, and you know, good time of the year around Christmas, and just had a break. So yeah, getting getting back into training slowly now, but um, yeah, trying to trying to avoid the dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what's the timetable like moving forward? I mean, how much time do you want to take off with the baby? I mean, and, and when do you see yourself fighting again? I mean, obviously got to got to chop out and pull my weight in the first few weeks, but um, I was going to be back training this week, but I've got a little bit of an injury to my knee, so probably next week start you know doing one a days, getting back get the fitness back up. And then uh, we'll just we'll just see what's in the cards. Try and pick a good card. Maybe fight in Asia. Um, if there's something back in Australia, you know, mid year. Hopefully, then jump back on that. Um, but definitely, I think mid year, Where, wherever the card is, I'll jump on. And we're having a bit of a Johnny Hendrix, a Stone Cold, Matthews <laughs> moment going on on the face. There is this a new look that you're looking to sort of debut when you return? Um, nah, just obviously with the baby, just having a time to shave and just yeah, um, got to start looking the part now. I mean, uh, like Dan Kelly said, I'm in the dad's army now, so yeah, look the part. And um, but nah, it's just it's probably going to start turning grey soon. Mm. <laughs> just on Dan, I mean, a lot of fans are really disappointed to see he didn't get his mm. retirement fight on this card. It didn't really make much sense at all because it would have been perfect for a bunch of spots through the card. What was your reaction when you saw that he wasn't going to do it? And then it looks like he's retired now, so it might never mm. happen. Yeah, very very upsetting. Um, obviously, bittersweet, and you know, we've got Cal on the card, so that's a, a teammate in our little sparring group who's who's got their shot. But yeah, it would have been good to see Dan, you know, back on the card. But I don't, you know, it's a big company. I don't think they're in the in the business of giving people one more one one last hurrah. So, but um, you guys you know, all him, came together to try and get him this fight. Everybody yeah. was retweeting, messaging media, trying to get him onto shows to try and make it happen. How important was it for all you guys to see him have this? Um, it's very important, you know, wherever the card was, but especially being in Melbourne, the hometown, it would have been, um, you know, win or lose, it just would have been a good send off for him. But, you know, he says he's retired, we'll see. A lot of people, you know, I know guys are retired three or four times and they just get the itch back, but we'll, um, yeah, we'll see for sure. But like I said, Cal's in now. We've been pushing for that for a long time and, and he's, a, you know, he's a beast, so he's definitely going to shine. Yeah, just just the exposure. I mean, the sport's been getting, you know, progressively get, been getting bigger each year. Um, I think the biggest difference is is seeing the number of gyms, the number of you know local shows, um, and the exposure. So I mean, when I was fighting, we were fighting in a ring. Still, we were the prelims on kickboxing shows. So trying to get that exposure is really hard. Now we've got these big shows that get you know they get live streamed and they're fighting in octagons. So it's just. Um, it's a good experience for the guys to be able to fight in an octagon so they know what they're getting themselves into when they're in the UFC. For me, the first time I fought in an octagon was on the Ultimate Fighter. Before then, it was all in a ring and it's a completely in different environment. So I think just just having the, the octagon be legal, um, the bigger shows, the guys you know, fighting in front of big crowds. I mean, I probably fought in front of 300 people as my biggest crowd before I got in the UFC. So just it's a big shock once you get into the UFC and I think um, you know, just get these guys getting that experience is, is the biggest difference for sure. How would you describe the Australian fighting style compared to other cultures? Um, I think what Jimmy Crute says is we're, we we punch on, so that's what we say. So a bit of a punch on style. We go in, um, we're not scared to take the fight anywhere. You know, I think I think the guys coming through in Australia are really well well rounded. We don't get guys who who have boxed previously or straight jits guys. We all sort of because it's so new, everyone sort of started everything together. Um, I know I did when I started when I was 15. I didn't start with one discipline, it was everything together. I think that's what the Aussies bring. I think we're well rounded. You see Jimmy, Jimmy's got awesome stand up, good judo, good wrestling, good on the ground. Um, I like to think I'm well rounded as well. Um, even Robbie Whitaker, you know, he was majority stand up, but he's he ended up taking Yo Romero down in their in their last outing. So um, I think being well rounded is what we have.
being a father keeps you busy for sure, but uh, do you keep tabs on the division? And is there anyone that stands out right now in the division? Uh, I haven't actually. Like you said, it takes up a lot of the time. Um, so, but we, I've always left up to the UFC. We've got the best matchmakers in the world. Um, so I always leave it up to them. You know, if I can pick where I fight, obviously now having a, having a baby would be good. But I've always said, you know, leave it up to the, to the matchmakers. They've never let me down. They've always given me good matchups. You know, win or lose, it's always been a fight that is going to test me, but also one that I always believe I can win. So again, we'll leave it up to them and see what they think. Anthony Pettis is an exciting new uh, addition to the division. How do you think his fight with uh, Stephen Thompson is going to go and how do you think he will fare in the world race? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously... Uh, he's a, I saw him in uh, in Adelaide, and he's, he's actually a big dude. He puts on a lot of weight. Um, before the before the Tony Ferguson fight, I would have said probably no chance. But he actually, you know, props to him. I didn't give him enough credit. He actually really did well in that Tony Ferguson fight. And almost put him away. So um, who knows? I think he's going to do really well in the welterweight division. And like I said, he's actually quite, he's actually quite a big guy. So I don't think he's going to be small um, by any means. So I think he would do well. Um, oh, just I got shut on for the first time the other day. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's about it. Nah, she's she's really well behaved. She sleeps well. Um, so nothing yet, but I'll keep you posted if something comes up. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Jack, nice. so, uh, Jack, you're often seen as like sort of an ambassador in the mainstream media. You're often called upon to, to comment on things about the sport in Australia. There is still a lack of education, however, among some stations. <laughs> what do you see as, as kind of a key to overcoming that educational barrier? And do you think it's you know something that's going to happen soon, or are we still kind of got to deal with that? Um, it, it's a lot better than what it used to be, and yeah, we don't mention that name Wally Daly anymore. Um, we don't like him, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot better than what it used to be. I used to go and you know, no newspapers wanted to cover us. They all thought we were just you know knuckleheads, and I guess. You know, when they see the when the sport gets bigger and we have countdowns on you know Aussie fighters and prime times and you see, you know, we go and fight in the gym and we train and we get punched in the head and we, you know, fight for a living. When we go home, we've got families, we've got little babies, we're normal people. So I've actually, you know, earlier in my UFC career, I did a little bit of work, you know, you know, trying to trying to help get the cage legalised here, um, and that entailed pretty much going and meeting with people. Um, you know, explaining what we do everyday life. I mean, I run a gym. Um, you know, so I got my own business. I was at school back then, uni. Um, you know, so by no means I was, at, was I a knucklehead. Um, some fighters, you know, yes, but majority of us we've got families, professional athletes. I think when they see us, how we train, um, you know, the, the science that goes into it now, the amount of work that goes into it. Uh, you know, and a lot of a lot of fighters, uh, especially from America, they come from university wrestling scholarships very well spoken, um, articulate, and I think when they st people start seeing that, then they start realising, you know, it, we are a legit professional sport like any other, but again, the exposure needs to build up so people see that for sure, yeah. Does that add any pressure just to continue winning and continue kind of being this, like, almost like a cultural ambassador? Um, no, nah, there's no pressure. I mean, I, well, you know, I, I put probably the most amount of pressure on myself. I expect to go win. Everyone else wants me to win, but... Uh, just having, yeah, whether, win or lose, there's still that platform there to try and to make people understand that it's, um, you know, like I said, we are professional athletes. And I've definitely seen it running my own gym. Um, the amount of females joining classes, kids joining classes now, as opposed to just, you know, blokes with tattoos all over them joining in. So people are starting to come around. I think, you know, now the majority of people see that it's um, what, what we're actually like, for sure.